In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone to this, the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Next week, we'll celebrate the last Sunday of our liturgical year. But today, we recognize that we're called into the experience of those last days. So we recognize our need of the Lord's mercy and love, and we ask forgiveness for those times we've not lived in that love. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we cry out. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A perfect wife, who can find her? She is far beyond the price of pearls. Her husband's heart has confidence in her. For her, he will derive no little profit. Advantage and not hurt she brings him all the days of her life. She is always busy with wool and with flax. She does her work with eager hands. She sets her hands to the distaff. Her fingers grasp the spindle. She holds out her hand to the poor. She opened her arms to the needy. Charm is deceitful and beauty empty. The woman who is wise is the one to praise. Give her a share in what her hands have worked for and let her works tell her praises at the city gates. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You will not be expecting us to write anything to you, brothers, about times and seasons, since you know very well that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying how quiet and peaceful it is that the worst suddenly happens, as suddenly as labour pains come on a pregnant woman, and there will be no way for anybody to evade it. But it is not as if you live in the dark, my brothers, for that day to overtake you like a thief. No, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does, but stay wide awake and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a man on his way abroad who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to a third one, each in proportion to their ability. Then he set out. The man who had received the five talents promptly went and traded with them and made five more. The man who had received two made two more in the same way. But the man who had received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now a long time after, the master of those servants came back and went through his accounts with them. 
The man who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Next, the man with two talents came forward. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. Here are two more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join your master's happiness. Last came forward the man who had one talent. Sir, said he, I had heard that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not, had not sown and gathering where you have not scattered. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here it is. It was yours. You have it back. But his master answered him, You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. Well then, you should have deposited my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have recovered my capital with interest. So now take the talent from him and give it to the man who has the five talents. For to everyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But from the man who has not, even what they have will be taken away. As for this good-for-nothing servant, throw him into the, out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Most forms of entertainment follow their own format. We have the three-act play, the tragedy, the drama, the romance, the Greek tragedy, or the Japanese kabuki. In each form, there are certain things that the audience expects to see. If it's a mystery, the culprit is usually not the most obvious as expected. In each form, we expect certain types of characters. In the romantic comedy, there is the one who tries to go between the two lovebirds. In the crime drama, there is the detective often stumbling along in the dark, trying to put the pieces together so that they can be ahead of the criminal. In the musical comedy, there's the stereotypical figure taken to the extreme. Gilbert and Sullivan were masters of this character in people such as Pooh Bar from the Mercado and the Right Honourable Sir Joseph Porter, KCB, from the First Lord of the Admiralty. In the musical comedy, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, the stereotypical buffoon is the state governor who will not decide until he knows the results of the polls. The governor's guiding principle is not to decide until he knows which decision will upset people the least and thereby make it less likely that he'll lose the election. In the musical, the governor's character is over the top, as befits the parody of the character of the politician, whose only interest is getting into power and maintaining their position. The reason such characters are employed in this format is because they work. And they work because the audience, even if secretly, 
can relate with the characters. For you see, if we're really honest, most of us are a little suspicious of the motivation of some politicians. In February of 1943, the Australian Parliament passed legislation bringing in conscription for the defence of Australia. The man who led the charge and argued loudest for this move was the Prime Minister, John Curtin. During the First World War, John Curtin's voice was one of the louses raised against Billy Hughes as he twice attempted to bring in conscription for the defence of the empire. Curtin, in his own personal life, did not agree with conscription. He fundamentally opposed it. He also knew that many in Australia opposed the idea, and unlike Hughes, he did not try to amend the Constitution by referendum, but rather he just legislated it. He knew at the time he was doing the right thing. He also knew that it could cost him the next election, but he had accepted the mantle of leadership and he did what he believed best and necessary for the country, even if it was unpopular. That's leadership. Leadership is to set aside one's own biases and do what is right and necessary rather than what is sometimes safe and popular. Leadership is doing is about doing what is needed despite the fear it might engender in us. For the politician, it's usually the fear of losing an election and therefore the position and the power that go with it. In every parable that we've ever heard Jesus tell us, he presents us with at least one challenge for the way that we live our lives. Often the challenges are many, but one thing they all have in common is they invite us to muse over the multi-layer of meanings that exists in the parables. And today's parable is no exception. It is considerably more than pressing call to us to make sure that we use talents responsibly. On the surface, it looks like it's about money and large amounts of money. Jesus was not telling a story about a small time investor and his trusted employees. This parable is more about using responsibly our brains, creativity and energy for the purpose of making real in our world the kingdom of God, even though sometimes that might seem very difficult. The spirit of this parable comes as an invitation, one that calls us to engage in a risky venture with God one in which we as disciples dare to believe that God trusts us with the building up of the kingdom. The parable is about God's trust in us to do our bit, to use our gifts, those gifts God has given us so that the kingdom may be known. If the relationship between God and us is one of trust, then there is surely an expectation for us to bring our initiative and our imagination to the way in which we manage the gifts that have been given to us. The slave in the parable is not chastised so much for his failure to use the money, the talent given to him, but more about his failure to overcome his fear and timidity. Matthew is writing at a time when the early church is beginning to really experience the pressure to conform to the status quo. The empire, the Roman empire, and the Jewish authorities want this new sect to toe the line, to not make trouble 
by continuing to proclaim the radical teachings of Jesus. Matthew is reminding the community that they have been given a gift, but its use will take daring and leadership, which means setting aside their fears. Every week, Matthew's community, as we do, would gather to celebrate the meal of the passion and the meal of the mission. This celebration is a reminder of the radical nature of what they believed and what we believe. It is also a call to follow through the cross to the empty tomb. If we are to be true disciples, then we must accept that there is a risk in following Jesus. What we say and do may not be popular. If it always is, then we're not proclaiming the gospel. But if we proclaim the authentic gospel in word and in deed, then it will always be right. It may come with a cost, but that is the risk we take because we have been baptised and anointed with the spirit of truth. William Barclay, in a commentary, makes four very useful points. Firstly, he said, God gives each person different gifts. So we are asked to make full use of what we've been uniquely given and to use them for the benefit of the whole community. When everyone does that, then the community is enriched. Secondly, he says, our work is never completed. Notice the first two servants who showed their gifts, earned the new talents. They were told not to, that they could sit back and put their feet up. Rather, because of their trustworthiness and the use of the talents, they were given greater responsibilities. The one who will be punished, the third point, is the one who does nothing. Even the person with one talent has something to offer. It's a sober warning that it is not just those who do evil deeds who will lose out, but all, also those who have no positively good works to show. Saying simple statements like, I didn't do anything, doesn't get us off the hook. I didn't do anything might be simply the answer, yes, we know. To the one who has more will be given, from the one who has not even what they have will be taken away. The fourth point. Jesus is saying that those who share generously the gifts they have are likely to, be, to see themselves enriched at greater levels. Those who jealously preserve what they have been given, hoard it and go into their shell out of fear of the outside world are likely to shrivel up. Those who save their lives will lose it. Those who share generously what they have with others will find themselves immeasurably enriched. It's the law of the gospel, but it's also the law of life, which many of us in practice find hard to believe. We need to spend time reflecting on what particular talents or gifts God has given us. Some of us are very clearly gifted, but there is no one, not a single person, who can say that they have been gifted with nothing. So therefore, how prepared are we to take the risk and share the gift and the talent that God has poured upon us?
And so let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, alert to our needs and the needs of the world, let us bring our prayer before the God of all. That the church, entrusted with God's kingdom on earth, will work with creativity and zeal by expressing Christ's love for all and by being faithful to God's teaching. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that nations and global corporations will use the Earth's resources responsibly in the development of a vaccine to fight COVID-19. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women will treat each other with dignity and respect, and local organisations who work with the disadvantaged will be supported by generous volunteers. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who use their gifts and talents for others will be abundantly blessed. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who are gathered will remain faithful in little things and watch for the coming of Christ by staying awake and ready. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick will experience the peace, comfort and healing power of God, especially those in our community and those who are suffering due to COVID-19. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will be embraced by the love of God in his heavenly kingdom. And may they be rewarded for their goodness, especially those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you lavish, on, lavish us with gifts so that we may work for the coming of your kingdom. Hear these prayers and help us to remain faithful to your word. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and again and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. and By his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let's greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Have a great week.